we have a, um, a climate law that mandates uh, Denmark to reduce its emissions with 70% by 2030. And the Ministry for Climate and Energy is overall in charge of implementing that law. Um, and the Minister for Climate and Energy chairs a new government cabinet, a green cabinet, where all legislation that is related to climate change has to be vetted and, and discussed before it is passed on uh, for, for government decision and then presentation in parliament. Um, now, um, every year the government has to present in parliament an implementation plan, a plan of action for the next budget year. So in September every year, a plan is presented that is then adopted in parliament in, in December for implementation uh, from January the following year. And we have to do that every year for 10 years. So it's a very, yeah. very rigorous system. There are, there are four interconnected domains, which is uh, research, development, demonstration, and market introduction. As part of the climate law, the, we also have published or, or developed a strategy for investment in green research, technology, and innovation. And that's the strategy that sets the, the direction for green technologies and solutions for the future. Um, it has a mission-oriented approach that involves partnerships and cooperation between um, authorities, industry, research. And um, the strategy sets out four missions where there are needs for new solutions and potentials for reducing uh, greenhouse gas emissions. Um, and as I said, this is done through partnerships with, with uh, authorities, business and research. Um, these four missions are uh, carbon capture, utilization and storage, that's number one. It's uh, green fuels uh, for transportation and industry, so-called power to X using green hydrogen. It's um, number three is climate and environment friendly agriculture and food production. And then finally, it's circular economy, that is the recycling and reduction of plastic waste. We know that um, technology develops over time. When you do a 10 year strategy, you can't assume that in year one, it will be the same technology and at the same cost as in year 10. So we have to, we have, to have an iterative process that is, a, that is a dynamic and takes into account uh, uh, developments. And, you know, in Korea, you might come up with a better technology or a cheaper solution to uh, carbon capture and storage. And, and then we want to be able to bring that into our energy mix. Uh, I mean, we are in such a dynamic global market space now when it comes to climate uh, technology. So we have to be able to adapt and, and we do that by reviewing it every year. I mean, the government says that it is really a hard, that it is also almost masochistic uh, as a policymaker, but it works. There is an um, annual review of an independent climate council with experts of the government policies. And these experts, they come with a very, very thorough review of uh, what happened last year, what's the plan for next year, what worked, what doesn't work, are we on track for the 70%? And this is sort of professors in climate uh, change, economics, uh, technology, who give an independent assessment of the, of the government strategy. And they are very, very hard. Um, every year, also, the um, energy agency has to come up with a, a report that details the emission reductions impact from last year and for the next year. So, mm. so we have an annual cycle where the, the independent council's report comes in February, the assessment of the reductions comes in April, and then the government has to present its plan for the next year in September. And that sort of rolls every year. So it's a very, it's a very sort of um, uh, tight system of annual uh, accountability, of implementation, of planning, of uh, policy making. Um, mm. We adopted the 70% target uh, two and a half years ago. We had the law adopted um, uh, less than two years ago. And in that time space, we've already uh, had a whole development of uh, power to X and green hydrogen. We didn't know about that when we started out. Uh, this um, idea of energy islands, uh, we didn't know that uh, two and a half years ago mm -hmm. when we started out. Uh, the, uh, the notion of taking carbon capture and storage to scale, there are many technical details so that once we have it um, 
so that once we have it uh, right, we can replicate it so that it's not just one island, but it may be five or maybe 10. Uh, the energy mm -hmm. demand is very high in our part of, of uh, Europe. So even if we can, the Danish uh, energy demand today is maybe only seven gigawatt, we're a small country, but we have a large neighbor like, like Germany um, that have a huge energy demand. Uh, they have decided to end coal, they have decided to end nuclear. Um, and currently they also have a very big um, a potential gas crisis because of the mm -hmm. very unfortunate uh, war between Russia and Ukraine. And, and, and that mm -hmm. might have an impact on the gas delivery for Europe. So, so Germany is in a big transition right now. And we think we can um, uh, pop probably produce um, uh, green electricity and, and green uh, um, hydrogen for the German market. And, that then changes the equation for our energy production. Then we will become a net exporter of uh, green energy. Well, I mean, the, the government's role is uh, number one, to provide the right regulatory framework uh, and the, um, the conditions for applying. We're also looking into speeding up the permitting process, um, the environmental assessment. Uh, the first windmills we built in the harbor of Copenhagen uh, the city invited the local citizens to become co-owners of the first turbine. So oh. citizens could, could invest and become, you know, partners in the project. And more than a thousand citizens locally did that. And now they feel very proud about that turbine, uh, oh. which is now old and a bit small. But, but still, even though you can find mechanisms of uh, involving the local population, that they actually feel um, a part of the, of the development. And I think that's something the government can do to to speed up the process i think the government always needs to take try to take a balanced approach and take on board all all opinions but at the end of the day um uh since we have to move the the uh, uh, green uh, technology forward by law we are bound to the 70 percent reduction target which is for a large part of the population and govern and the parliament and um uh, everyone else who wants, uh, we have to move forward. So we have to come to decisions. And, you know, time is ticking on, on climate change. The reports we're getting from the uh, UN's uh, climate panel um, are really, really bad. Uh, the situation globally is bad. So um, while we have to take uh, everything into account, we also have to make decisions on moving forward. So um, that that's... Uh, I think that's the spirit in, in Denmark now, and I would say with the with the war in, um, in in between Russia and Ukraine and the energy situation in Europe now, the political mood in Europe is leaning more towards taking decisions on going forward with the renewables at scale quite fast. Uh, that's the way we're pushing now, because we have to find alternatives to the fossil energy. Uh, the government has also with industry created public-private partnerships around the 14 main sectors in Danish business. And in, within each sector, the, the business community has self-organized. They have appointed uh, the um, a CEO from their group as the, as the chair. For example, um, uh, Mask, the shipping company, is, is heading the group on, on, on shipping. And then they are looking at both the policies, but also the technologies that it takes for their sector to deliver on the 70%. And they are looking at the policies and regulatory frameworks that are in place uh, and now. They are coming with suggestions for um, uh, policies and, and, and frameworks that could help them uh, speed up their transition to, uh, to low carbon technologies. And they are also looking at what it takes internationally. I think we have been focused, uh, just like you, on mitigation for a long time. But uh, given the way we can see the impact of climate change is now happening, uh, we're getting uh, um, severe downpours of rain, we're getting bigger storms. So we know that sea level is rising, that might uh, endanger our uh, land. Um, um, uh, you know, um, the, the harbor of Copenhagen uh, ha has to adjust. I think there's more and more focus on adaptive uh, technologies. And many of the Danish municipalities are investing in uh, uh, changing the sewage system, changing the drainage so that uh, more water uh, coming from, from above can be 
can be led uh, underground. Um, we're looking at building maybe sea walls or coastal protection. Um, many of these technologies are now being developed and, uh, and uh, scaled up.